Hello everyone and welcome to episode two of Project Mud Type. As you can see, I am joined by Gareth. Say hello. Good morning. And we are here at This Is Your Garage in Oxford. Today we have got the glorious X-Type and what are we going to do? We're going to put a few sparkly bits into the cabin and we're going to raise the ride height. And then one more thing, we're going to lop off half of the exhaust and let the V6 breathe. What do you say we do this? Let's get on with it. Before we get cracking on the suspension, I want to start the day with a couple of quick improvements to the mud types interior. We have a Momo Heritage Line beautiful mahogany wheel here, and we're gonna be putting it into the uh, Jaguar X-Type because we need mahogany in the Jaguar X-Type, aren't we? We need a bit more wood in here. And yeah, you can buy this steering wheel plus more on the Car Throttle Shop. If you want to see how to install a steering wheel and gear stick like these ones, click the I in the top right corner and head over to Car Throttle Extra for our quick video tutorials. Now then, let's get to work jacking this Jag suspension up. Oh yeah. Right, so we've got the wheels off. And um, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna try, pull out this whole assembly and see what diameter the top mount is because our great vision is to fit a big piece of billet up in here in order to push down the whole suspension so we get more ride height. Less articulation, but more ride height. But it'll be fine because we're going to take the anti-roll bar off as well. The plan to raise the front of the car is as follows. Remove the spring and shock absorber units on each side, fabricate and weld in spaces, and then put everything back together. You can just name everything project rust. Hey Alex. What's that? Nothing. Are you happy about another rusty car? Oh, Project Rust. Yeah. Just going back and forth in order to not shear this. Getting there slowly. With Gareth struggling to get the rusted pinch bolt loose enough, I jump in to give him a helping hand. Watch this. Oh, oh no. Did that just happen? We need some lube. Well, it's too late if you've snapped it. Yep, that's <laughs> it's, that's it's too late, Alex has snapped it. I d you would have snapped, it would have snapped for you as well. Yeah, that's why I was going up and down and then round and then up and down and then round. On my side, it'll be all right. I'm gonna do, let's drill it out. Let's get a new hub. We're just here to fix things when we screw them up, when I screw them up. Can you fit a grinding, you can fit a grinding wheel in there. Yeah, that's what I was just so wondering. Cut so cut it. At least you can get the... Yeah. Oh, tearing through the shock. I'm trying to search for words. They're not coming to mind. I think hatred's one of them. So much negativity in the workshop. You know, this is not what being a car guy is about. Everyone just needs to be happy. Everyone needs to relax. With progress on the front suspension now hitting an Alex-shaped brick wall, Gareth starts on the rear of the car. At the rear, we'll be taking the different approach of fabricating metal sleeves with an inbuilt platform for the spring to sit on. This sleeve and platform unit will then be welded onto the rear control arms, after which we'll bolt everything back up and bask in the glory of a 70mm lifted X-Type. With our plan in motion, the first thing to do is to completely get rid of the rear anti-roll bar. Ah, part one of this being an off-roader, complete. Meanwhile, at the front, all-round good guy Adam from Volkstechnics had jumped in to remove the hub assembly to later allow for the broken pinch bolt to get drilled out. Oh. Yes. It's just all hands on board, you know, everyone's seen the X-Type, they're like, oh, I've always wanted to make that an off-roader, I've always wanted to jack it up. I know what, I'll help the car throttle guys. Okay. Here we go. We are on our way now to a uh, metal fabricator to try and get these metal cones made up to weld onto the plate and then raise the suspension. I don't know how we're going to get a circular part in there unless it we're using. <coughs> oh, you want just a piece you of could, square? You could just put a piece of tube across it. That might work as well. You could even drill yeah. a hole and nut and bolt that. Adam then cuts the box section that will be welded in place to act as a platform for the spring to sit on, and gets to work on the circular sleeves that will hold everything in place. We've 
got everything cut in the machine shop, so what we plan on doing is putting this outer pipe in here, seam welding it across, dressing this with a grinder, so that will sit inside, and this is, this is about 20 mils, and this is about 50, so you've got 50, 60, 70 mils, which is exactly what we wanted. This will rest in here, and then what will happen is this will be sitting on top of this piece of steel, so it will probably sit in there like that. So this is exactly what we wanted. We wanted the lift and we wanted the spring to be secure. So although it looks really ghetto, there's been some engineering that's come to be it. A bit of discussion yeah. in engineering. Been 17 minutes of discussion. <laughs> With the steel for the rear suspension now prepared, Gareth works on getting the other pinch bolt on the front suspension loose. For this bit, I thought it wise to take more of a hands-off project manager approach. Meanwhile, Adam cleans, grinds, and welds the first rear suspension components to the control arm. Oh yeah, here he comes. Genius. With the front suspension out, we take the units to these fancy hydraulic spring compressors to safely remove the top mounts. Gareth then grinds the rubber side off the top mounts to give a clean surface onto which our custom spaces will be welded. I reckon that might have to do. So, vaguely clean. Hopefully Adam can weld this quite nicely. With the top mounts almost prepped, Adam begins welding the spacer unit onto the near side rear control arm. This had to be done on the car because for neither love nor money was the rusted control arm bolt coming out. Now we have the bare bones of the rear suspension sorted. We've now been discussing the front. So um, yeah, we need to go back to the uh, back to the metal factory and um, get some more metal. There's plenty of space on the top there, isn't there? It's only 70 bar 75 mil. Which is going to be even harder to put in. That's going to be a nightmare to put in. Materials chosen, Adam cuts two pieces of box section and two metal plates that will make up our unique spacer. Meanwhile, Gareth and I begin reattaching the rear control arms with their somewhat crude looking but hopefully functional spacer units. Oh my god. It is the wrong way around, but I honestly don't care. Yeah. We have one side in, as you can see there. It's looking glorious. It's looking just like a a Range Rover autobiography. I Pretty much how we designed it. Yeah. Just like, just like that. That is the dream we yeah. envisage. With the rear suspension minutes from completion, Adam does the final bit of welding, attaching the new spacers to the top mounts. That's it. That's it. That's it. Wow, oh. nice. Hold it there. That's straight and true. Yeah, putting them in the wrong way around, it's fine. Sweet as a nut. It's a good plan. That's a rear done. The sole focus is now finishing the front. Adam marks, punches, and drills pilot holes before handing them to me to widen the center with a step drill. This is to give us enough access to later drop the nut back onto the top mount when we reattach it to the spring and damper unit. Once that's done, Gareth taps the three surrounding holes on each plate to allow new bolts to come in through the top of the suspension turret. It's just all coming together. It is currently 20 past six, which means that we have got 40 minutes left to assemble everything and then, um, and then look at our glorious creation, which is... It's glorious. Ethan, glorious. Yeah, Ethan looks impressed. Gareth looks enthused. I'm enthused, but so, this is um, not going to finish in time. It's not going to finish in time. So um, bear with us. Yeah. <laughs> Front suspension assembly is complete. As you can see, we have got our glorious, very cleverly engineered spacer. And now the fun really starts because we need to uh, fit all of this again, which is going to be impos uh, difficult. As the day draws to an end, all we have to do now is to put the front suspension back in place. And how hard can that be? I think we might have gone a little bit overboard with uh, trying to get height. 
is this wishbone. It is going to be an interesting one trying to bend it down. This is literally maximum. <laughs> How far <laughs> off are we? Miles. Really? Miles. <sighs> I don't, I don't think this can be completed tonight. Yeah, yeah. Did we go a bit overkill? Yeah. Definitely. Will we sort it out? Yes. But not tonight. And our captive audience are enthused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. In theory, it's there. In reality, it's not. Not quite. So um, I'm going to have to come back tomorrow. Yeah. We'll see you in the morning. Welcome back to day two of the Project Mud Type build, and I am joined with Gareth again. Gareth, you look slightly different. Yeah, I filled out here a little, I think. Yeah, and your accent sounds a little bit different. Should we call you Kyle for today? You could. Okay, yeah. Kyle. Everybody, this is Kyle. Kyle is going to help me out. We're back at This Is Your Garage, and what we're going to be doing, Kyle, is finishing off the front suspension, and then we're gonna straight pipe the Jaguar. So it's gonna look amazing, and it's gonna sound awesome. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so the first plan of action for the front is to, if I could just borrow that, Kyle. You certainly can. Weld this on. When I say we, I mean Kyle. Weld this on, which will give us another point of contact in the, uh, in the strut top here, just to make it more secure. Um, obviously, it's not gonna be a road car, so don't worry. It doesn't need to be particularly road legal. Uh, this is just gonna be an off-roader, so we're gonna have some fun with it, and it is engineering as we go along. First, we need to unbolt the subframe, don't we? Because yes. there is no way in hell that we're gonna be able to get everything no. in if the subframe is no. still in place. Not even close. I've never actually dropped a subframe, but Kyle is here to help. And if it all goes wrong, then just blame him. Beautiful. I am seeing how much of sorry we have underneath the car, which is quite a lot of sorry. Oh God. Now we could drop this down, sort out the top end of the shocks get them in place, then bring the subframe to the shock, yeah. reassemble the suspension, and then as we're, as we're doing the bolts up for the subframe, it will compress. Yeah. See how we go. Oh, oh. <laughs> I like a bit of that. I just had a hard life, 180,000 miles. We've just uh, removed the bolts to make sure that the subframe can actually be lowered, uh, otherwise we'll end up shearing off a bolt and having a load of issues that way. Uh, so now we know that that's all good, we're gonna sit the spacer on top of the shock, like so. Couple of tacks, back out, weld it properly, back in. Times two, and then we should be golden. With the collar lined up and tacked in place, we bring the suspension unit back out for the collar to be welded in. We then put yeah, the I'm unit back into place, install longer bolts, and tighten down with locking nuts. For the other side, it's simply a case of repeating what we've just done. The problem we faced here was that the drive shafts wouldn't go into the assembly while still attached to the suspension. To combat this, the hub assembly was then removed for the drive shaft to slot into place, after which the assembly was reattached. The next challenge would be fitting the wishbone ball joint back into the hub. Right, there we go. Yeah, oh. yeah we're in. Right, okay, Alex, if you let up on the bar. Muck it. Yeah, it's gone. Oh. Went on its own. Yes! <laughs> Right, the only thing we've got to hope now is that there is enough to clear that drive shaft. Pull so it all back shut, yeah. We won't find that 
Oh, yes. 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 Now, we straighten it. That is like a millimetre tolerance. Well, it will go further, look. This assembly is pretty much in. The suspension is actually in. The, uh, the wishbone is attached. Everything's good. And it's, uh, it's a bloody great feeling. You're sweating. Oh, yeah. I'm sweating. You're relieved. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, and the good thing is, is that it clears the drive shaft as well. Because if it didn't clear the drive shaft, then all of this would have been in vain. I mean, millimetre precision here. Finally, there was light at the end of the tunnel. All that needed to be done would be to repeat the process on the other side, cut the front anti-roll bar for better articulation, and then reassemble the front discs and calipers. car parts man has just has just brought my exhaust <gasps> yes straight pipe all the things for the exhaust the plan is simple make it sound awesome so adam starts by cutting out the silencer and two back boxes after which non-restrictive steel piping is prepped to be welded in place The last piece of the puzzle is to cut out holes in the bumper for the straight pipes to emerge out like a pair of subtle middle fingers. Oh. That is good. <laughs> that is oh. so glorious. <laughs> With the Jag now sitting higher than any other X-Type has before, and with the free-flowing straight pipes in place, it's time to lower the car and let her rip. Oh my goodness. That's it. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Look at it. That is a properly, properly lifted X-Type. That is filthy. Oh, yes. oh. <laughs> so here we are, boys. Yeah. This is our maiden voyage <laughs> in our glorious creation. Got a few clunks going on. <laughs> but we're riding high. <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, as, wow. it, as you can hear it continuing, I think that is literally just the spring rubbing. Yeah. It rides all right, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it really does. <laughs> oh, this is what this I'm is talking cool. about. <laughs> yeah, go for it. <laughs> Are you impressed? I'm impressed. I'm, I'm impressed with the ride still. You're going to go for the oh, he's going for the potholes. Yeah. See anyway. I mean, it's got a lot more coming to it. Big thumbs up from everyone. She rides oh. like a champ. It's like it was designed like this. So there you have it. We have lifted a Jaguar X-Type. We've straight piped it. I want to say a massive thanks to this awesome place. This is your garage to Richard, to Dave, to Kyle for helping. And last but not least, to Carol. <laughs> Come here, Carol. Adam from Volks Technics has been the one who's done all of the engineering, all the fabricating, and Gareth as well, wherever you are. I don't know, you're at work. Bring it in. No, we're going to uh, Come here, let's sandwich. Uh, yes. Oh, yes. Who would have thought it would be possible? Beautiful. But well we've done, done it. So hopefully that inspires every other X-Type owner to do the same. Coming next week to Project Mud Type, we'll be fitting off-road tyres, making a snorkel, and fabricating an awesome roof rack. 
I hope you guys have enjoyed this build series so far. Make sure you click here to watch more episodes and here to subscribe. See you next time. Oh, it hurts being so professional. <laughs>